You know, if it's not about sports, I find it very hard to concentrate. What is up guys, it's Braden here from Dragon King Sports and today is the second installment of my Dead Team series and today's subject is the Atlanta Thrashers, an NHL team that exists today as the Winnipeg Jets. The city of Atlanta was awarded an NHL expansion franchise on June 25th, 1997. The city had previously had the Atlanta Flames from 1972 to 1980, but the team moved to Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and it still exists to this day as the Calgary Flames. Along with Atlanta, three other cities were awarded expansion franchises in 1999, Nashville, Columbus, and St. Paul, Minnesota. These franchises would be named the Nashville Predators, Columbus Blue Jackets, and Minnesota Wild. The nickname for this new Atlanta team was the Thrashers, which was the name chosen because the state bird of Georgia is the Brown Thrasher. In addition, the man who founded the city of Atlanta was named John Thrasher, and the city was originally known as Thrasherville. The Thrashers were owned by the founder of the television station TNT, Ted Turner, whom also owned the Atlanta Braves of the Major League Baseball and the Atlanta Hawks of the NBA. The team would play home games at Phillips Arena. The first player signed by the Thrashers was goaltender Damian Rhodes. Patrick Stefan became the first ever draft selection for the Atlanta Thrashers, going first overall in the 1999 NHL Draft. They also drafted Luke Sellers with the 30th overall selection. It turned out that unfortunately both of them would be draft busts, with many considering Stefan to be the worst number one pick of all time. And for his part, Sellers would only play in one NHL game in his entire career. The Thrashers, with head coach Kurt Frazier leading the team, played their first ever game on October 2nd, 1999, which was a 4-1 loss to the New Jersey Devils. Right winger Kelly Buschberger scored the lone goal in the game, becoming the first Thrashers player to ever score a goal. The team, like many expansion franchises, absolutely sucked, finishing 14-61 with 7 ties. Back in those days, overtime was only played in the playoffs. Atlanta had the second overall pick the following year in the 2000 NHL Draft and this time hit the jackpot, drafting left wing Danny Heatley, who would become synonymous with Thrasher's hockey. They improved slightly in the 2001 season, going 23, 45, and 12. The team drafted another gem in the 2001 NHL Draft with the first overall pick, taking left wing Aya Kovalchuk who would develop into one of the best players in the league. Heatley and Kovalchuk were both named to the NHL All-Rookie team in 2001 and 2002 respectively, and Heatley was named Rookie of the Year in 2001, which is known as the Calder Memorial Trophy. Team attendance wasn't exactly high during this period of time, and they only averaged about 10,000 people in the first few seasons of the team's existence, but the fans that were there certainly were passionate. An entire section of the season ticket holders called their area of the arena the Nasty Nest, and they would routinely shout at opposing teams in order to throw them off rhythm. A cool feature of Phillips Arena was their scoreboard. It had two thrasher heads on each side that faced opposite of each other, away from the scoreboard. When the thrashers scored a goal, the beaks opened up and flames would shoot out, which is just freaking awesome, dude. Current commentator Ray Ferraro actually played for the Thrashers in their first three seasons of existence and would recall later that Ted Turner, the owner, was reluctant to spend money to acquire talent or to keep existing talent. He said that GM Don Waddell had told him that Ted Turner cared far more about the Braves and Hawks and would only give the Thrashers money after the first two had been fully payrolled. Midway through the 2001-02 season, Kurt Frazier, the head coach, was fired and Bob Hartley was hired, a man who had led the Colorado Avalanche to a Stanley Cup the previous season. The Thrashers finished the 01-02 season with a 1947-11 record. Danny Heatley was named NHL All-Star Game MVP in 2003, and in the same year, Ted Turner resigned as chairman of AOL Time Warner. This was significant because without him in charge, AOL Time Warner sold the Thrashers to Atlanta Spirit LLC. And remember that name because this will be important later on in the story. The Thrashers finished the 02-03 season with a record of 31-39-7. And, and Heatley and Kovalchuk were both beginning to emerge as bona fide stars in the NHL. On September 29, 2003, Danny Heatley was involved in a car accident that killed his teammate and close friend, Dan Schneider. And no, not the Nickelodeon Dan Schneider. 
Heatley was indicted and charged with second-degree vehicular homicide as well as five other charges. In exchange for a guilty plea on four out of the six total charges, he received three years probation and community service. He returned after just a mere 31 games. Schneider was memorialized by a black patch on the Thrasher's jerseys with his jersey number 37 on them. 11 games into the 03-04 season, the Thrashers were in first place in the Southeast Division of the NHL, but due to a horrible record after the start of the new calendar year, the Thrashers would not qualify for the playoffs. However, they had one new reason for hope. Goaltender Kerry Lettinen had made his debut, winning his first four starts and recording one shutout. The team finished the 2003-04 season with a 33-37-8 record. The entire 04-05 season was cancelled due to a player strike, and when play resumed in 05-06, Danny Heatley, who was clearly struggling with the death of his beloved friend, requested a trade to get a change of scenery to try and move on from the guilt that haunted him. And honestly, who could blame the guy? I can't personally imagine how I'd feel in that position. He was subsequently traded to the Ottawa Senators. In exchange for Heatley, the Thrashers received star right-wing... Marion Hossa, who made an immediate impact on the team. Sadly, though, within minutes of the first game of the 05-06 season, goaltender Kerry Lettinen would pull his groin, which would keep him out for quite a while. Veteran Mike Dunham entered the game, and he too quickly injured himself. This meant that the only goaltenders left that could be used were developing prospects Michael Garnett and Adam Burkhow. The Thrashers would eventually sign veteran goaltender Steve Shields, but he too was injured within 10 games. Despite numerous injuries and just plain bad luck, the Thrashers limped to a 41-33-3 record. However, they did not qualify for the playoffs. Before the 06-07 season, the last remaining player from the original 1999 team, Patrick Stefan, was dealt to the Dallas Stars. At the time of the trade, he was the Thrashers' all-time leader in games played with 350. With a stellar squad in 0607 of Marion Hosa, Aya Kovachuk, and a healthy Kerry Lettinen in net, the Thrashers qualified for the 2007 NHL playoffs with a 43 28 and 7 record and a Southeast Division crown. They were the number three seed and faced the number six seed New York Rangers in the opening round of the 2007 Stanley Cup playoffs. They were swept by the Rangers, unfortunately. The 06-07 season was the highest attendance the Thrashers had ever had, and both playoff home games were completely sold out. The Thrashers began the following season in 2007-08 with a record of 0-6. Hartley was fired as head coach on October 17, 2007, being replaced with John Anderson. The Thrashers hosted the NHL All-Star Game that season, with the Eastern Conference defeating the Western Conference 8-7, and as fate would have it, Thrasher forward Mark Savard had the game-winning goal. The Thrashers finished the 07-08 season with a record of 34-30-2 and, and did not qualify for the playoffs. The following season was not a whole lot better, with the team languishing, finishing 35-41-5. and Ayla Kovalchuk was set to become a free agent following the 08-09 season, and despite numerous attempts, the two sides could not come to an agreement in regards to a new contract. Don Waddell offered him a 12-year deal worth $101 million, but Kovalchuk declined. The team, seeing the writing on the wall, traded him to the Devils on February 4, 2010, rather than lose him in free agency. In return, Atlanta received defenseman Johnny Oduya, rookie forward Nicholas Bergefors, and prospect Patrice Cormier as well as a first-round pick in the 2010 NHL Draft. The Thrashers finished the 09-10 season with the 35-34-7 record, which was 10th in the Eastern Conference and well outside a playoff spot. Due to this, head coach John Anderson was not offered a new contract, and despite the Thrashers being absolutely terrible, GM Don Waddell was actually promoted, becoming president of hockey operations. Assistant GM Rick Dudley took over as GM. In addition... This was the year that longtime goaltender Kerry Lettinen was traded, being dealt to the Dallas Stars on February 9, 2010, in exchange for Ivan Vishnevsky and a fourth-round pick in the 2010 NHL Draft. Rick Dudley made a lot of changes right away, determined to turn the team's fortunes. On June 23, 2010, Dudley pulled off a trade with the Chicago Blackhawks involving nine players and draft picks. 
The Thrashers received Dustin Bufflin, Ben Eager, Brent Sopel, and Akeem Alou in exchange for Marty Wiesner, Joey Crabb, Jeremy Morin, and the Devils first round pick that they had gotten for Kovalchuk. Meanwhile, in the background, a legal battle had been taking place between the ownership group of the Thrashers, Atlanta Spirit LLC, which I told you would be important later in the story. They also owned the Braves and the Hawks. It all started when they disagreed over an NBA trade. Steve Belkin, one of the owners, refused to approve a sign-in trade of Phoenix Suns guard Joe Johnson. The rest of the owners attempted to oust Belkin, and Belkin sued them, which caused a judge to block the owners from doing so in 2005. In 2009, that ruling was overturned. By the way, Joe Johnson had actually been playing with the Hawks since 2005 and was still playing for them at the time that the owners were fighting and suing each other and battling it out in court. Financial losses kept piling up and the fact that the Thrashers had poor to average attendance and apathetic owners didn't help one bit. It was plainly obvious that Atlanta Spirit LLC didn't even like the Thrashers, nor did they even care about them. Finally, Belkin was bought out by Michael Guerin and Bruce Levinson, who became lead owners. They sued their own law firm for $195 million and in the suit claimed that they had been trying to sell the Thrashers since 2005. The Thrashers got their last ever win on April 7, 2011 against the New York Rangers at Madison Square Garden. They played their last ever game on April 10, 2011, which was a 5-2 loss to the Pittsburgh Penguins. On May 16, 2011, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution reported that talks of selling the Thrashers to True North Sports and Entertainment were underway. On May 31, 2011, True North held a press conference announcing that the deal had been completed. They announced their intentions to move the team to Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, and become the second iteration of the Winnipeg Jets. The original iteration of the Winnipeg Jets had moved to Phoenix, Arizona in 1995 and were renamed the Coyotes. The Coyotes are currently a dormant franchise and will likely be a future episode of Dead Teams, so be on the lookout for that. The Atlanta Spirit Group retained the rights to the Thrasher's name and logo, which are expected to be used when and if the NHL ever grants an expansion franchise to Atlanta. In 2024, in the midst of the Arizona Coyotes ownership looking for possible buyers, it was speculated that the team could be sold to Atlanta Spirit and the Thrashers could return. Ultimately, however, this would not happen, as Ryan Smith, owner of the Utah Jazz, would purchase the team and relocate them to Salt Lake City. Overall, a horrible ownership group was the reason the Thrashers did not survive, but poor attendance did not help either. It's hard to imagine the NHL would ever give Atlanta another chance, given the fact that it's failed to keep a team there twice, in both cases having their hockey teams leave for Canada. If you like this video, leave a like, subscribe if you have not already, and comment for the algorithm. Peace out.